This is Salma Schimmel for the Group Room at the ESMO 2012 Congress happening now in Vienna. And I'm happy to introduce you to Dr. Maria DeSantis, who is the director of the genitourinary program at the Kaiser Franz Joseph Hospital here in Vienna and chair of the ESMO GU Non-Prostate Task Force. Welcome to the Group Room program. Well, thank you for the kind invitation. I'm happy to be here. There were actually some interesting abstracts at this year's ESMO meeting uh, concerning bladder cancer. In bladder cancer, um, the main topics were uh, treatment with targeted therapy, and there was uh, much interest paid to the question if perioperative chemotherapy was used a lot or according to the guidelines. And I think these two topics are really worth mentioning. The first abstract uh, that was presented at our oral presentation session dealt uh, with uh, targeting uh, HER2 uh, positive patients in bladder cancer. And um, this um, abstract was presented by uh, the French group by uh, Dr. Udar, and uh, this group made the effort, the very difficult effort, to uh, randomize patients in a, a phase two trial um, who were uh, HER2 positive. And I have to mention that uh, HER2 positivity is quite rare in bladder cancer. This was not very clear from the very beginning, but in this group of patients, uh, they screened uh, nearly 300 patients, um, it was only 13% positivity. So um, actually less patients than were expected uh, were actually entered in this trial. And so this trial had the problem of uh, um, a lack of patience and lack of power. Nonetheless, it is an important trial because uh, uh, randomized trials in bladder cancer are rare. And uh, these HER2 positive patients were randomized to uh, a platinum and gemcitabine regimen plus or minus trastuzumab, which is targeting, which is uh, acting against uh, the HER2 receptor. And actually this was a really negative trial, also lacking power, so we are not really sure, but the overall survival was not different between the two treatment arms. Well, there was another topic I thought um, is really important uh, concerning bladder cancer and the use of perioperative treatment, perioperative chemotherapy. Um, it is well known that patients after cystectomy um, with muscle invasive bladder cancer, they um, only survive in about 50% of patients when all uh, disease stages are taken together. So uh, this is a, a not very good outcome. So uh, there were studies about um, perioperative chemotherapy and uh, showing that uh, there is a clear survival benefit with the use of neoadjuvant chemotherapy, cisplatin containing neoadjuvant chemotherapy in this patient population. And this neoadjuvant chemotherapy um, has to be, um, um, is the one possibility to apply chemotherapy in this setting. The other possibility is to do it after surgery, the in the adjuvant setting. So in bladder cancer, we have uh, evidence that Neoadjuvant chemotherapy prolongs survival. It is a five to six percent uh, increase uh, at five uh, to ten years of follow-up, and we have really strong re uh, data from randomized phase three trials and meta-analysis. Um, for adjuvant treatment, the evidence is not so strong. We have the problem of trials that were so, sort of flawed, and the guidelines recommend actually neoadjuvant chemotherapy and uh, not so much adjuvant chemotherapy. At least uh, in many guidelines, uh, it is uh, not really recommended for uh, daily clinical practice. So interestingly, this concept has not, um, um, ha has not been adopted very much in the community, uh, not in Europe and not in North America. And at this year's ESMO meeting, uh, the, a Canadian group from Ontario, they looked at this problem and they went in their database. Their database captures the whole, on, whole Ontario, and they had about 3,000 patients with muscle invasive bladder cancer um, who received, uh, um, who, were, uh, who had surgery. And they saw that uh, only 4% of these patients received new adjuvant chemotherapy. Um, also, in the guidelines, it is stated 
uh, that you should give it to nearly all the patients. On the other hand, in this, uh, in this database, they discovered that uh, adjuvant chemotherapy that is not recommended that much in the guidelines was used uh, up to in up to 23% of patients. So um, on the one hand, new adjuvant or uh, perioperative chemotherapy in this population was highly underused. And uh, furthermore, adjuvant chemotherapy with uh, less evidence uh, is used uh, more often than new adjuvant chemotherapy. So this is interesting, but reflects what we also have seen in Europe and what has, uh, what has been uh, reported uh, from the US. How important is it in tissue, sharing of tissue? What, what are your, some of your own concerns or feelings about that, the need to be able to have more uh, red, readily available, accessible tissue and the sharing of tissue amongst researchers? Well, this is, a, this is a very important topic, and um, I think tissue is the basis for research in uh, many cancers, and it would be extremely important to have this in bladder cancer, for example, to discover more targets, because uh, we have not made progress in bladder cancer for many, many years. We have not made progress after the invention of AMVAC and gemcitabine cisplatin, and this was in the year 2000, it's more than 10 years ago. And uh, this is, uh, there is really a vacuum of, uh, of, of novelties in bladder cancer. And we would urgently need uh, larger uh, um, tissue banks to make progress in this area of uh, research. There are efforts, but it is all about um, money, about resources. Thank you, Dr. Maria DeSantis, Director of the Genital Urinary Program at the Kaiser Franz Joseph Hospital here in Vienna, and chair of the ESMO GU Non-Prostate Task Force. Thank you for the kind invitation.